Hit the like button, everybody. Hit the like button. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, y'all. It's Trending Topics Wednesday. I'm glad to see y'all out there in Jersey. It's a whole washout. It has been raining all day. A little chilly outside, too. It's been raining. It's chilly. So we're going to see if my internet holds up. I did hardwire into my computer. We're going to see how this goes down and if I could get through the show today. But yes, yeah, Wednesday. Trending topic Wednesday, and you know, um, the dark times. Mm -hmm. This is called the dark times. Why? Because when Diddy won his BT Lifetime Music Award, he had a whole, I think that speech was nine minutes. Nine minutes. A whole nine minute speech, okay? He had a whole nine-minute speech. And during that speech, he said, I want to thank Cassie for the dark times. Then he said, love. That's what Diddy said. Woo! They said uh, life and death is, a, 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 is a, the power of the tongue. He manifested this thing because now, for all the dark times, it's alleged that Cassie is speaking with the feds. She's helping them out to get him on these XT charges. Did anybody ever look up the definition of what qualifies for ST? Look up the definition. We're going to pull it up as many variations of it. But listen, based on the definitions, there's some wives, some girlfriends, and everything in between that are currently being st if you go by the definition see the way they have it they said he had a whole ring or whatever the case may be um but when you go by the definition um i love you girl thank you i appreciate you so, you know, if you go by the definition, uh, um, it's easy for anybody to be accused of ST. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times they do stuff and they say stuff and they put stuff out there. And listen, I have to be clear all the time because I think some people get it so twisted. Listen, whatever this man did, he needs to pay for it. Come on, in my opinion, yes, that is part of the definition. You better talk to the people. Yes, it is. You know, the, now his son, um, you know, first the people had their eyeball on Justin because Justin was named in the original lawsuit. But now Tyrone Blackburn is coming back and saying, you know, we're going to add Christian um, Combs to this lawsuit, King Combs. They say he learned from the best. He learned from his daddy. So they're accusing him of giving the girls substances and, you know, allegedly um, taking advantage of them. And the only reason why I'm saying it that way is because it's YouTube. So even be careful what you say in the chat. And I say, good gosh. So here's my thing, though. If Justin saw it and Kristen saw it, did Quincy not see it? Did the girls not see it? This man allowed these shenanigans to go on in his home. The home where the kids lived also. I think by the time we finish hearing about this thing, it's just going to be a whole sick and wick mess. Now, interesting enough, Kamora Lee, um, she stayed friends with all the all the all the baby mamas. It seems like, cause for Easter, baby love mom and baby love was over there with Kamora Lee Simmons and the kids. And I'm gonna take a wild guess and said the twins was probably over there too. See, and, and, and there's a lot of people, when it comes to this ST thing, what they're not going to get them on most likely is the underage girls. 
and I'm and or, well, I'm saying girls, the underage individuals, I'm going to say. And the reason why I'm saying that is because everybody that's talking is 10 toes down that they never seen anybody underage at the uh, uh, said parties. So it's like tell on duty, but save myself. It's like, yeah, I partied, but I got morals. If I would have saw an underage uh, person, I would have never. So were the underage people just there, not under your watch? You know, little Rodney, Little Rodney wrote all this stuff up and he said, you know, at the time too, there were, he got pictures and he said they were underage uh, uh, girls there. So Little Rodney gets to tell his story and tells about how there were underage girls there and he got pictures and whatnot. But he ain't trying to say it said underage girl in real time. He just took some pictures. is messy it's a lot to dissect in this case but now the claims is that cassie um went to the feds but let me tell you all y'all could go back in one of my videos back when cassie sued they said because her husband encouraged her to turn over a lot of the tapes and the footage to the feds she initially didn't want to turn them over because a lot of them show her in very compromising positions. But her husband way back then encouraged her to submit them. I guess because, you know, everybody's ready to see Diddy go down. Uh-huh. Cassie might have played chess and not checkers, but... um. Praying for all the victims. But I don't know if Cassie's hands are necessarily 100% clean. And I'll just leave it there. I'll leave it there with that. So, you know, we're going to talk about Cassie and the Fed situation. We're going to talk about Christian Combs, the dark times. The dark times. We're going to talk about Christian Combs and now Christian Combs being wrapped up in a, his alleged dirt is coming out that allegedly, you know, he learned from his daddy. Christian Combs is 26. This is a mess. Then we're going to go to Spirit Airlines. You know, there's a lot of things. It's all in the name. Spirit Airlines. And I'll leave that there. Well, this woman was on the flight acting a straight fool. And let me tell you, it, it's not because, oh, I just have the money like that. When I go on vacation, I take certain airlines. I sit in certain seats. But I save up my funds to do so. Because there's a lot of foolery going on right now on these airplanes. The people are acting crazy. Just a whole fool. They getting crazy. Like, people be rushing you in front of the line. And I had to say one time to one lady, girl, the plane is not going to take off until we all get on there. You don't have to knock me over. And they board by seat anyway. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get space in the overhead cabinet. Well, let me tell you another clue too, sweetie. If the overhead cabinets are full, all they're going to do is take your bag and check it anyway. And you won't have to pay nothing. So do me a favor. Calm down. Acting crazy. And I personally get my seat near the window. Cause I don't want to keep getting up when you got to use the bathroom and you trying to twist, turn, whatever. I get my seat near the window and mind my business. Mm -hmm. But the people are acting foolish on the planes now. She acted a whole fool and got arrested and we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know nobody wants to wait for their bags at the baggage, but you know what? I'm that girl. I'm never in a rush. I go right down the baggage. I don't, I check my bags. 
because I'm not walking around the airport with my bag. I got to walk around the airport queue. Just my pocketbook. I go get my Starbucks. I have all my little gadgets in my bag. And I don't walk around with my luggage. And I'm not stuffing everything in the, in, in the carry-on. No, I need all my stuff. I need all the shoes I want, my slippers, my pajamas, the three bathing suits, whatever I want. I check my bag here, check it, whatever. I told you, though, when I go on vacation, I save my money to go. So I check my bag. And I go down with the check out and I get it. That's it and that's all. I'm trying to get up the overhead, somebody helping me. I'm only five feet tall. I ain't got time for all that. Can you put my bag up? No. Then somebody want to come and slam their bag next to yours? I can't do it. Uh-huh. So I check the bag and keep it moving. And then I roll them through the airport and do whatever it is I want to do. And I don't have to worry about if I walk over there. Can you watch my bag? No. And I don't want my bag in that dirty, nasty bathroom in case I have to use the bathroom. Uh-huh. Yeah, I use the packing cubes too. I just ordered me a nice little polka dot one. I'm going to show y'all when I get it. I hope it's cute when I get it. Yeah, I do the packing cubes and all that. Keep the stuff organized. I bring air fresheners with me to plug in. So when I get to my room, I can plug in the air freshener. Got me little wipes to clean up a little bit. Have me a good old time. I'm prepared. And I get there early so I'm not rushing and pushing and shoving nobody. And, and getting upset when I got to go through the lines. No, I ain't doing all that. Mm -mm. And now I'm going to go sign up for the uh, uh, the TSA check thing. They said I got to go to the office and do it because they got to fingerprint me. Go ahead, come on, fingerprint me so y'all can start patting me down and making me take off my shoes. I just got to walk through and be cute. That's it. I ain't playing these games with these people, but we get global entry. Oh, you had it since 2013. Come on now, Sasuke. I'm late to the party, but you know I'm showing up to the party. I'm about to go get it. Or give me some global entry. So I can feel like a star, just breezing by everybody. Okay. Yeah, the people still. Come on, yeah, TSE. I'm getting one of them. I am major changes. Yes, I am. Gotta be cute. Gotta pass by all the people. But let's get back to the dark times here. This is what Diddy said. He thanked Cassie for the dark times. Well, he ain't know what dark times was, but he about to find out. Let me tell you this. No matter what, no matter what, I promise you, somebody at some point, they're going to turn on you. Because these people that want to play gangster, they're not gangster. No, no. Them old OGs back from the day, they was like, what? I'll go through 20 in, that, in jail in a minute. Now, it couldn't be me. I'm going to pass all the way out. But the OGs, what? I got to do 20, whatever. I'm doing 20. I got to do a 15-year bid. They do their 15 years. And they come out like nothing happened. But now, you, you come on now. There's no honor among these. But now... These ones now, they're not built for jail. No, they're not. They're not even built to be put in handcuffs. They're not built to be questioned. They're not built for all of that. And Diddy appears to be one of those, he ain't built for jail. Now, Suge Knight, that's a whole nother breed. He was built for that. He'd been there before. He did again. He like, whatever. He doing it. But D, uh, uh, Diddy, no, no, no. I don't, he ain't built for that. Let me share this screen real quick. Where we at? Let me see. I hope I can play. Let me see if it, if it went away. I might have to cue it back up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me cue this thing up because I think it's at the... Um, I think it might be here because I only can play a few seconds. For my boo Cassie, for holding me down in the dark times, love. Well, he about to find out what that love is really all about. 
Why? Because like I said, Cassie is allegedly speaking to the feds. And he was up there sweating like a whole runaway slave. All them uh, 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 substances was getting to him under those lights. Uh-huh. T.D. Jace is getting mentioned in all the wrong places. You better talk about it. Mm-hmm. He thanked T.D. Jace. Oh, and where is Lori? Where is Lori? She got stories to tell. But she, he, he said Lori held him down during the dark times. It's Wednesday, y'all. And it's Trending Topics Wednesday. And then he talked about Cassie in the dark times. He said love. I wonder if he over there in that mega mansion now saying love to Cassie. Knowing that she might be part of this takedown. Now listen, guys. Y'all know what I need in the chat because I'm about to bring the people in the building. I need a what? Come on now. I need a choo-choo. All aboard, everybody. It is time for Trending Topics Wednesday, and we're talking about the dark times, okay? Diddy is going down. Cassie, his boo, that knows where all the bodies live, that knows everything that went down, that knows how perhaps people got paid, that knows what he likes, doesn't like, and what he does and don't do every single day. She knows the rooms in this mansion. She knows about maybe perhaps the underground waterway that they claim is at that mansion. Yeah, Cassie knows it all. And now, allegedly, she's telling it to the feds. Let me bring the people on in the building. Hey, in my opinion. Hey, Diva Choo Choo. Choo Choo. Hey, Dr. Love, Felicia, E, Katrina, and Tay Tay. Hold on, let me bring Tay Tay in the building. Hey, y'all. Hey. Choo, 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 choo. Now, Mama Combs, because that speech he did was like nine minutes long. He was just a rambling and a talking and a jumping around and a acting foolish and crazy. Mm -hmm. And Mama Combs was in the audience when he was talking. And he was up there sweating for days. Huh. Well, we're going to see. Well, now they're claiming that Cassie you know, she, she's talking to the feds. Now, they letting this thing be a whole street thing, which is messy in and of itself. Um, I had, let me see if this is, the, if the video is still up that I want to play. Maybe I got to come um, with it, um, back to it in a minute. But I'll go here first. And then as y'all talk, I'll come back and try to find this video that I wanted to play. So Diddy, Diddy's ex Cassie cooperating with the feds in the ST probe at the lawsuit settlement. Okay. Sean Diddy Cohn's ex girlfriend Cassie has been cooperating with authorities investigating the hip hop moguls um, months after the former couple reached the settlement. Radar, RadarOnline.com has learned. Insider said the singer is believed to be among the witnesses that the feds have been in contact with as they build their case. It is speculated that Cassie may have helped authorities establish probable cause to get a judge to sign off on the warrants. Other women who sued Diddy have also been in contact with authorities, according to a new report, following the raid of his Los Angeles and Miami properties. At this point, it's unclear if Diddy's former employee, Rodney Jones, has been interviewed by the feds following his own explosive lawsuit against the record producer. Cassie and Diddy dated for nearly a decade before going their separate ways in 2018, and she sent shockwaves by claiming the music executive subjected her to a pattern of control and abuse in a bombshell lawsuit filed in November 2023, which also accused him of ST. She alleged he forced her to have um, relations with multiple male, um, male workers, um, SA'd her, and gave her alcohol and substances to keep her under his control. Um, I'm going to go ahead and because the rest of that article, it, it reiterates stuff that we already know about the raid, about all the lawsuits. Um, what do you think, in my opinion, about now they're saying that Cassie is helping the feds out? Um, as she should. This was should have been the way she should have went with it in the first place. I think in order to make a change, we have to step up and, and, and say things to these people. But I also think 
it's gonna put her in a bad light too. And they probably gonna give her um, immunity. Mm-hmm. On the things that she's in, involved in because she secured some of these people. So essentially, you were in on it too. But, you know, it is what it is. But we need to take this demon down. Okay, I hear you in my opinion. Okay, Dr. Love, I'm coming to you, but one minute I'm going to just interject. And this is just one, one of the definitions. There's many, right? Um, definitions of human trafficking. Trafficking is awful often referred to as modern day slavery. According to the definition by Homeland Security, human trafficking involves the use of force, fraud, cohesion to obtain some some type of labor or commercial um, sex act. I guess I could say that. Labor trafficking occurs most often when someone is forced or coerced into working for little to no money in a factory, domestic place, or manual labor type industry. Um, so, and it doesn't necessarily have, mean that you have to move the person state to state, and it can still be considered sex trafficking, even if you don't move them state to state. Um, Dr. Love, your thoughts? Um, for Cassie, I would just say um, one thing for sure, one moment, one thing for sure, if I was her, I would be very careful um, because... I just feel like you got so many people now to me riding with Diddy. I would hate for someone to say that she helped him as well get ladies, you know, also. And to say maybe she could have done some things, um, how could I say, unconsciously. Um, So if I was her, I would always talk to the feds or whoever, DA, whoever she's talking to with a lawyer. That's what I would say. Um, you, if I was her, you never would be talking to me alone and you would just, um, have to talk with me with the lawyer, you know, but I would, I'm glad she is cooperating. And my thing is you, you only need to hear what happened to me. I don't know what happened to anybody else. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Take, take your up. Well, hello. Good evening, everybody. I agree with Dr. Love too, cause one, she knew everything, and two, she was she was with the man, and three, she's the uh the mystery, the queen of you know that right there. So yeah, she she better be careful. That's all I gotta say about that, Diva. Thank you, Tay Tay. Um, E, you're up. Uh, I see we're starting off with the feel-good story today. All right, Diva. So Cassie cooperating with the feds is great news. And, you know, when you refuse to cooperate with the feds, then you end up in jail. So, yeah, it would be in her best interest to cooperate. All I hear is good news uh, from what we're starting off with. Y'all said that the man had been slipping through the cracks for years. Y'all said that he had folks from the NYPD on the payroll. So now they're taking it up a notch. The feds has eyes on the situation. They're looking into it. They're investigating in real time. It's happening now, okay? The ball is rolling. I mean, they got Cassie on the team, and they're working on Carisha next. And Daphne Joy, we just talked about her yesterday. Daphne, if you're in the bushes, you may want to give the feds a call and tell them what you know, girl, because you already got 50 cent on your coattail. If you want to kill two birds with one stone and make this custody case go away, cooperate with the feds, girl. I don't see no reason at being careful because when when a man is getting ready to lose it all and they starting with his pocketbook, Please, ain't no need to be careful. He's the one that needs to be careful. Now is the time to burn everything down. So, ladies, I say get them. Get them for me. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Felicia, you're up. Is she there? Okay. Um, Let me go. Katrina, you're up. Yes, it's a good thing to get him. But before I, talk, before I say anything... I would tell them, look, y'all gonna have to give me immunity before I talk, before I say anything to self-incriminate myself, put it on this paper, sign it, document it, have it notarized, have everything stamped before I say anything, because she was the one that said that he made her 
uh, get on the phone, get on the computer and do all that and get these people there. So she better make sure she and dotted her eyes and crossed her T's and make sure her lawyer is right there. Like uh, Dr. Love, in my opinion, Tay Tay and he said, but before I tell you anything, stamp on this paper that I'm immune for everything because I'm giving helping y'all. And the part that I played in it, I was coerced into doing it. I was stressed into doing it. I was told if I didn't do it, I'll get beat up with so she better tell something. Like I said, but she better make sure that she get an immunity before she start really, really talking because she can really, really get herself in some trouble too. But we'll see. I digress. I'm done. <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, I, I mean, her lawyers wasn't stupid, right? I think that um, she, anything she's doing, she's doing under the direction of her lawyer, to be very honest with you. Um, I think they're one of their best witnesses because she's been, um, you know, with him for a whole decade. One of their best witnesses would be Cassie. And again, she was another one. Um, I don't understand how these people are so foolish. I mean, good for us, um, you know, the community to, and, and the people to get them off the streets. But I don't understand how these people are so stupid. And what is their obsession with taping themselves and having these tapes and saving these tapes? Because the tapes always come back to bite them in the booty. I mean, it's the same thing that happened with um, Art Kelly. And now, you know, it's going to seem like it's going to happen with Diddy. And he, it seems also, too, that he used the tapes as his calling card, like, you know, to see if you were going to be down. You know, a lot of this Diddy situation is is, is a high level, right? Um, th but th there's people on a low level that do this. The latest thing in the dating scene now in the world is that these men, I don't know if um, females do it, too, but these men... Um, their calling card is they send you a picture of their body part and it'd be unsolicited. And you just wake up to your phone one day, you go, like, oh, who, who told you to send that? Where that came from? And they call them D pictures. Y'all know what the D stand for. So mm -hmm. it's like everybody is, everybody is participating in these shenanigans. And all I'm saying is, they start on a very low level and then it progresses to more, progresses to a higher level. So this thing is going on from the bottom all the way up to the top. Diddy was at the stream, but I'm telling you that people participate in this every day, all day. Yeah, because you got these Instagram models. They be on the um, gram. They get guys, fluent. the guys will fly them out to have S with them give them money whatsoever then if they don't do it the guys get mad and leave them at the airport so yeah he's not the only one they be out there doing it too they do yeah. and then you have the um what do you call that that uh there was a football player recently i think one of his girlfriends was pregnant one girl from one girl was pregnant he did the whole reveal party to say they was having a boy and a girl our girl the other girl got pissed and she got mad um, and then she started going crazy and said he was paying her money every month to have relations with him. She, he made her, you know, have a, a abortion. It was just crazy. But this thing is being done on so many different levels by so many pe different people. It's insane. Um, I'm going to show this video and then we're going to move on to um, his son, Christian Combs. Let me see if I could play it. Nothing, nothing is sticking to him yet. And the feds, Homeland Security, they're really in charge of this more than the FBI. They're letting it all play out in the media. But the 1999 shooting has a lot going on with it. And you've done a great job by having um, Natanya Rubin, the woman that was actually shot in the face. I find her very credible. I don't know why this 53-year-old mother of three would go on the air saying that Diddy shot her in the face if, if it wasn't true. I wasn't there. I don't know. But there are a lot of discrepancies about that case. And what my sources in Homeland Security have told me is nothing's off the table right now with, quote, Mr. Diddy. They're telling me they have many witnesses coming in, even as we speak, sitting at sitting at tables with the feds, talking to them. And not just about the 1999 shooting. There was another mysterious shooting in November 2022. You may know about this one, too, Natasha, involving um, Sean Combs and his son, Justin, at a recording studio in Los Angeles. 
Little Rod's, um, Rodney Jones's suit in last month said that he was there. He was told by Diddy to say that it was a drive-by shooting um, of this friend of Justin's, a 30-year-old man, only called G. We don't know who G is. He said that G was shot in the bathroom where Justin and Diddy were and that he was not on the street with a drive-by. I couldn't reach the LAPD, and their report on this is fairly vague. When you look into Diddy's background, going back, Natasha, to 1991, when he was basically just a kid, like 21, he ran this charity basketball event, not nine people died in a stampede. He somehow, you know, skated on that and couple of years later started Bad Boy Records. There's even more here that I couldn't get into in my report about past events that have been a li little bit sketchy, that haven't ever been totally sussed out in a courtroom. So all I can say is my people are telling me this is the tip of the iceberg. I don't know what's true or not. I mean, it could be that he'll skate again. We don't know. No charges filed yet, and we have yet to see a search warrant. What is the biggest thing that you couldn't get into the report that you think warrants further investigation or that you're concerned or suspicious about? To be really honest, Natasha, we don't, as you know, reporters don't have a lot of time. We're constantly feeding the beast. This story that I did and was focusing on in part with help from some of my sources is just one of many. There's an incident in Atlanta. I don't really want to go into them all now because I don't have all the facts at my disposal and I don't want to just smear people unnecessarily. But there's a lot that went on with him and I think that's what we're seeing with the feds raiding his homes in Miami and Los Angeles. They're taking out, as you know, computers. They're taking out cell yeah. phones. And then there are conspiracy theories that say, you know, Diddy was running on, on Jeffrey Epstein type of operation and the feds went in there to get the tapes out of the top people that don't want that to be to be ever seen by in public. So you don't really know. And in the world we live in right now, you just have to wait and see. Tell me about what you're hearing about any potential involvement of Jennifer Lopez, because not only in your report are you, are you talking about him bragging about shooting people, bribing jurors, but also using his then girlfriend, J-Lo, um, as a gun mule. What are your sources telling you? What kind of confirmation do you have about that incident? Oh, absolutely none. That all comes from Rodney Jones's lawsuit. And to be honest, Rodney Jones's lawsuit, there's a lot in that 73 pages that's a little odd itself. He calls himself this Christian from Chicago, but somehow spent 11 months with Diddy Come on now. forced to procure sex workers, sleep with strippers, be groomed and groped by Diddy and any number of people. He's a grown man. He said that they took his car keys at one point, but I think you can call an Uber in Miami and Los Angeles <laughs> last time I checked. So I'm not going to say that Rodney Jones's uh, lawsuit is the gospel. I don't think Jennifer Lopez really has anything to do with this. She was just a hot young star on her way up and she was going at Diddy. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, it, did she carry his gun in there? I, I have absolutely no evidence to support that. And I don't want to smear her either. She's moved on. You know, since Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Centura, uh, sued him in November, accusing him of sexual assault and physical abuse, sex trafficking, we know three other women, one man, have all come forward with their own lawsuits. Uh, Diddy and Cassie did settle for that undisclosed amount just one day after her lawsuit was filed. What role, though, if any, do you think all of these mounting lawsuits from Diddy's alleged victims will play in the federal investigation? Well, I think they've already played a huge part. The minute, and you're really right about this, Natasha, the minute um, Cassie filed that bombshell lawsuit, and then the fact that Diddy settled with her one day later showed him to be vulnerable for the first time. And of course, you know, with all these rap moguls, their whole deal is what they, you know, call flossing, like they're, they're showing off, they're, they're invulnerable, they're all powerful. But, and, and also a lot of people were afraid of Diddy. Whatever Cassie decided she went for it. She was courageous. She spoke her truth. And one day later, he settled. And everybody saw that. That was the first real nail in the coffin. And then the, the second one was Rodney Jones's suit in uh, last month. Those were That was a really killer twofer for him. So regardless of what the feds are actually finding on his property, it means that other people will be emboldened to come forward. But they're going to keep people just trying for a payday as well, which is why I'm, I'm hedging a lot of what I'm saying to you, because these are the early stages yet. And somebody as, as successful as he is and shrewd and powerful is going to have people after him for money and just because of jealousy. New Proactive Clean, an acne routine for sensitive I just wanted to eat oh. in there.
Um, you know, everybody has an interesting theory on this thing. Uh, will there be some copycats, so to speak, some people looking for a payday? Well, you're always going to risk that, right? But that doesn't mean that others that perhaps have a true story that their story is not true now here's the 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 uh, the the messiness for me is that now they're linking um just um christian cones in it and they're saying you know that christian you know he got it from his daddy and they are now accusing him of you know doing similar acts as um his dad did right so christian cone's daddy's son accused of saying and you know giving substances to people also and they said the lawsuit is looming meaning that it is coming okay so pretty much i'm not going to read through this whole thing i did link this article um to the description of this video but they're saying that um, little uh, uh, Christian Christian Combs, King Combs, that he has done very similar acts as his dad. Now, many could say we're going to wait and see, and, I, and that's what I'm going to say. We're going to wait and see, but many can also say that he saw a lot. He learned from the, he learned from his dad, and he's doing the behavior that he probably grew up in his house seeing. So you figure he is 26. He just turned 26. And Diddy was with Cassie for 10 years. So we know at the very least, Diddy has been doing this behavior for 10 years, right? So if you back it up 10 years, Christian Combs was 16. So imagine at 16 seeing this. Um, do would would Diddy protect his uh, uh his own kids when he violated allegedly other younger kids? You know, he said in videos out of his own mouth. There was videos out of his own mouth where he was saying, you know, uh, Usher said out of his own mouth. I can't tell you what went down. I can't tell you what I was exposed to when I was a youngster under um cones. And he said I saw things I didn't even realize and know what I was seeing at the time. We saw videos where Justin Bieber um, was petrified of Diddy, would it appear to be like that, and didn't even want any parts of him once he got away from him. And he allegedly was only, only with Diddy for 48 hours. In my opinion, what are your thoughts on uh, King Combs, Christian Combs, and these allegations that perhaps he is like Diddy? I'm pretty sure he is because look who raised him. You know, oh. like my like son. And if he did, then he should go down. And if he don't want to go down, then he needs to go make him an immunity deal with the feds, and hopefully he can get off and he can turn over his daddy. But other than that, I don't have no sympathy for him. He may not have knew it then, but he know it now. Good God, it's not turn on your daddy. All right, thank you in my opinion. I appreciate you. Um, Dr. Love. Okay, well, oh, do I think he's like him? Not every single thing, no, but a lot of ways of maybe mistreating women, getting many as women, getting a lot of women, you know, like his dad, things along that line, yes. But to say he's just like his father, no. Do I feel like he done something back then? No, because he was under age. Um, so, yeah, I just, no, I don't think he's that exactly like his father, no. Mm -mm. Oh. Thank you. Tay-Tay, you're up. Well, the apple did not fall the tree, too. And, oh, how the mighty have fall down. Because, like, father lost son. And he just followed his father full still. So, no, I don't have no uh, sympathy for him either. He just like his dad. Clean, clean him, and him and his dad go share the same uh, uh, cell together. That's my dog right there. Thank you so much, Tay Tay. Um, let me just, I'm coming to you, E. Let me just interject here. Um, another video. Um, this, this particular young lady that in 19, I think it was 1999, where she 10 toes down that Diddy is the one that pow powder in the face, like in between like her two eyes. Um, she's relentless, but she's also saying that, you know, she's getting threats still to this day because she's speaking out saying, you know what, take Diddy down. So let me just play this. There are five different lawsuits uh, alleging 
very similar kinds of crimes, all of them deeply distressing, uh, forcible rape, uh, sexual abuse. Uh, most of the lawsuits are filed by women. One of them is filed by a man named Rodney Jones, who filed a lawsuit in February, claiming, uh, among other things, that uh, Sean Combs bragged openly about committing the shooting and that he said he bribed witnesses and jurors to get acquitted. Allegations of jury tampering, I mean, that is really serious. And these are it's, just revealed in this lawsuit just filed a couple of months ago. It's horrible. It took 24 years for this to come out. You know, what saddens me is the fact that, you know, Ms. Rubin has been screaming this forever. But, you know, I hope justice is served. It's unfortunate that a lot of these cases, you know, you lose in the court of public opinion and in the courtroom. You know, Mr. Combs has every right to defend himself just like any other citizen. He's not the judge or the jury, though. You know, he is not the witnesses decided to go on the stand and change their statements. And the prosecutors could have came with a better argument. You know, everybody played a part, even the media. They chose to only, you know, interview the celebrities in the case, even networks. They only did documentaries and interviews with the celebrities in the case. They did not care to listen to Natalia Rubin at all for over 24 years. You know, somebody who had a front row seat to what happened that night, one of the most important witnesses was Jennifer Lopez. Has she yes. ever spoken about what happened that night? I could not find anything. The only article, um, well, not article, the only thing I saw was like an AOL interview, and she basically talked about her relationship with Mr. Combs, and she said it ended in a quote-unquote bank. Right, but we know that she also was arrested the night of the shooting, spent about 12 or 14 hours in a jail cell until she was released. Uh, she certainly had to see what actually happened, and if these charges Absolutely. that he was bribing people are true, she would know it. I believe she knows what happened. Everybody in that room knows the truth. It's going to take for them to be real and be honest in order for her to see justice. Leah Gordon, great to talk to you. Congratulations on the documentary. And my gosh, who would have who would have dreamed that your documentary would now become a possible brand new criminal case? Uh, stay tuned, as they. It's a lot of moving pieces to this. E, you're up. Uh, like father, like son. <laughs> it's magic. Uh, this is another feel-good story for me because the fish stinks from the head down and we got to get the entire line. You know, yeah. folks want their sons to be with their daddy so bad. Well, here it is. This is what it looks like when a man strikes your face, disrespects you, calls you out of your name, and you keep letting your sons hang around them. What do you think uh, the man is going to teach his son? He can't teach him anything other than the degeneracy that he already is. Just because a man is the biological father to your kids, it does not mean that he is supposed to be in their life or that he can teach them whatever whatever the hell he wants. Um, that is a privilege. And if a man is not of good character, keep your kids away from him. How about that? Or else you'll be just like Misa Hilton because Justin is out of control. Make no mistake about it. And Misa has no authority over him. OK, he's lawless, just like his father. Christian Combs is out of control. He is a problem. And yesterday, folks and Stevie J wanted to know why HSI used so much force. Well, ding, ding, ding. Your father is known for hanging folks over the balcony, breaking your mother's nose, allegedly, and putting ammunition under folks' car. Of course, HSI is coming in and using force. Everything that that family has been accused of, I'm shocked that people didn't come in there wearing hazard suits to prevent contracting STIs or whatnot. The word on the curb was always that these freak-offs have been videotaped. So when you're being accused of SA and providing folks with medication to immobilize them so you can take advantage of them. I don't give a damn how much force these people use against you. If they dragged you across the line back and forth until they put holes in your shoes, that's your problem. Once again, on Christian Snapchat this morning, he was posting, and it's still there right now because I just saw it before you came to me and told me to speak, posting videos of him at the club the night before, posing for the paparazzi, drinking liquor, throwing money at the strippers. I mean, girls all over in these videos and in their undergarments with him dancing with his shirt off, just drunk and smiling.
And so then we fast forward eight hours and I come up here and now we're calling it the dark times. It sure as hell wasn't a dark time for me because if Christian is at the club partying like all is well, then I say the HSI didn't come hard enough. I say they didn't scare him enough. And that's evident. And please don't ask me to imagine what Christian saw growing up. I have my own demons to fight, just like we all do. It's, it's called tough titties. But I do have to say this. I, I blame the mothers. Now, Kim is not here. And she went on to have two more kids with them. So I don't even want to talk about Kim. But Misa, that's the one who keeps coming out. And I need to have a word with her because... You met, she met Diddy when he was 15 years old, right? No, she was 15. I'm sorry. And Misa should have known because I believe they said that him and Kim was dibbling and dabbling during the same time. So he was creeping on you. So this is my thing. Misa, Kim, and Diddy have had this thruple for quite some time. They've been sharing this crusty Negro and participating in the degeneracy. So why on earth would you let your son remain under his thumb for all these years because it's too late now the man is 30 and the other one is 26 i think he just turned a 25 whatever the number is he's 25 or older so why did these women let these boys be under these men when they didn't even want to be around them there was an interview that's floating around on youtube of misa uh speaking with somebody i don't know if it's Vlad tv or whoever it is and she's saying that her and Mary J. Blige left the East Coast and flew to the West Coast to go to a Suge Knight party. And she was trying to get away from Diddy and Mary was trying to get away from KC. So, and this was in the early 90s. So fast forward to 2024. Now you're throwing the fit on Instagram, complaining about your son getting the DUI and the Homeland Security raiding Diddy's house and slapping your little problem child head first down on the cement. Stop bothering us with this. Now Diddy needs to stop having the babies. Oh, that's true. Choo choo. Woo! Choo choo. Choo choo. Um, let me add this and interject this into the situation. Hold on one second. And that crossed over into the Tupac Shakur murder investigation. Phil Carson joins me now. Phil, thank you for doing it. Happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter. Thanks for having me. So Give us the for dummies version for people who aren't six layers deep into hip hop about what could be going on here with the investigation of Combs. Well, the allegations are that he was involved in a lot of drug, drug trafficking, gun trafficking, uh, human trafficking. Right. And HSI is not going to try to obtain and then execute search warrants at his mansions unless they have some good probable cause to put in the affidavit and the judge isn't going to sign off on it unless there's something there. So, right. It makes you now, think that we've all been there. assuming we've all been assuming Phil, that this is about drug guns and young women or men or whatever, uh, being trafficked for sexual purposes. You're saying, yeah, there could also be another angle, which is this older area of concern about Combs criminality. Why do you think it and what could be the connection? Well, Keithy D has always stated um, that he was going to be paid a million dollars or just over a million dollars by Sean Combs to uh, to take out and kill Tupac. Now, Keithy said he never received that full million dollars. Um, but ever since uh, Keithy was arrested and they executed a search warrant on his house in Las Vegas, he's coming up on trial in June. And when people start coming up to trial, they start talking. And they start saying right. things that they normally would take to the grave. So who's to say what he might be providing in regards to, uh, to information regarding Sean? Well, one thing you and I agree in. Now, I want to pause for a second and say this. Keefe D is now out of jail. Keefe D needed almost a million dollars to get out. I think his bond was 750 or something like that. 750000 He did not have it initially. All of a sudden, I think it was before the raid, Keefe D was out of jail. So where did this money come from? Where did this 750000 that he did not have before, he was sitting in jail that whole time, waiting until his trial date, and all of a sudden, he got out. Let's continue. 
Uh, the idea of somebody taking anything to the grave, those days are long over. Uh, this is a talker's yes. business, especially the hip hop world. When these guys get jammed up, uh, they tell a story nine times out of 10. So that's why Suge Knight is in prison. The idea that he turned himself in, uh, as anybody can just Google and see, uh, he had lots of guys flip on him and that's why he is where he is. Now, why do we believe that this guy Keefe D knows anything about Combs' involvement in Tupac and that that would be compelling to the feds? Well, Keefe D is considered an OG from LA, so an original gangster. I mean, he's from way back in the day. He yep. rubbed shoulders with bad a guy. lot of important people, a lot of bad guys, uh, was involved in a lot of bad stuff himself. He knows a lot of information. So you really got your people are trying to weigh because we don't know what this uh, what the evidence is directly revolving Keefe uh, in his case and potentially him providing information that can carry over into the Diddy case. So when these HSI agents, I mean, there's a high bar in terms of executing a search warrant um, on a huge public figure like Sean Combs. Um, right. They're going to make sure that they have all their T's crossed and I's dotted because they know the, uh, the, the national or international media attention that this is gonna get, and they don't wanna look like idiots. So there's gotta be something there, um, obviously, that they were expecting to find in Diddy's house. Do you think that Sean Combs had something to do with the murder of Tupac Shakur or the earlier shooting of Tupac Shakur? I would, I would venture on the side of no. But at the same time, um, we're going to see a lot of that evidence play out. I mean, nothing happened for, what, 27 years, and suddenly something new came up, and we just can't put our finger on it. Nobody knows because everything's under seal um, regarding um, why they finally arrested Keefe D. So something new, evidence-wise, had to come out within the last year in order for them to obtain that search warrant and ultimately arrest Keefe. And like I said, he's going to trial here in the next few months, um, and all that's going to come out then. Or it's already come out because they're busting on Combs right now. So obviously, if he had anything to offer them, they must be somehow aware of it. Otherwise, logically, it doesn't make sense. Um, but Phil Carson, I appreciate very much uh, as we're trying to figure out why this is happening. This is good grist for the mill. Thank you. I will also say this for um, those that remember, but these are all conspiracy theories. Um, what is what is the one? Easy E. There, there were conspiracy theories about Easy E when he passed that you know he did not have the disease they claimed he had, and also that um someone unalived him. It's a lot of theories around that. Um, Felicia, are you there? Okay, Felicia might have um, got disconnected. Katrina, you're up. Yeah, um, I honestly think the feds got uh, Keefe D's out of there because it's just it's just so coincidental that he get out <laughs> right after the puffy thing because they need him to testify. Um, with his sons, yes, they saw everything their dad was doing and they probably was getting uh, passed on the back. Because you doing like your dad, son. You doing like, and I guess the more women they had, the more prouder they thought they was making their dad. Uh, there's no, I'm not saying that this is all alleged, but I'm just saying in general, all of them going around this man, there's no possible way they're not picking up some of his habits. And I'm not saying they're picking up all their habits, but I'm just saying that's why they want to be with him because they was partying and they was reaping the benefits. Because if not, why would you with your mom? You've seen all this bad stuff going on, and I'm quite sure they have seen it. Why didn't you leave to go be with your mom? No, because you want to party and stuff with the girls, just like your dad. And so now it just came back and bite you in your butt, allegedly. But uh, you, you've done some things. And I'm not saying that he done bad things, but we will know from that because you're not around this man all this time and nothing is happening. Be for real. I just don't get it. I don't see it, and the mom's coming out. The only mom that can't come out is Kim. But like I said, if Diddy slapped his mom, imagine what he would do to another person. Come on, so, Tina. I mean, s his mom. Sorry, he s his mom. Slap, s hit his mom. Put it that way. So if he did that to his mom, imagine what he was doing to these other women. You have no respect for your mother. You have no respect for women. So when people keep saying he's a good father, no, he's not. If he's beating up on your mom, he's not a good father. 
if he's doing taking her down the road, breaking people noses and stuff, he's not a good father. A good father would not hit the person that gave you life. You the fruit of her. So how you a good father to him, to your child, but you're not a good father to the mom. Make me make that make sense, because it don't make no sense to me. So that's how I feel. I'm done. Choo -choo. <laughs> and Julius, you're up. Hi, y'all. So I was falling asleep last night, but my body was spent. Um, it seems like for the past, like, since the raid, something more and more is coming out. And it's like, dang, bruh. Why you keep having these kids for so for showroom trophies? Like now they picking up your bad habits and stuff. Like come on now. Like if you didn't want your kids involved in the riffraff, you shouldn't have been doing the riffraff anyway. Like, you know, I tonight I'm gonna have to make it publicly known. I completely Staying with and backing E with every word she's saying tonight. Choo choo. <laughs> Thank you, Julius. Um, Wayne, you're up. Um, you know, I have, you know, <clears throat> I have empathy for the kids, and especially, I mean, you know, the king, uh, King Combs, you know, because it's unfortunate. That the person that's supposed to raise them, show them the way, and all that, put them in this position, in this situation. Mm -hmm. You know, kids wouldn't normally be exposed. And do I think he was like his father? Absolutely. Mm. Boys at that age, their hormones are raging. Mm. And you're going to tell me that they ain't seen some things? It just triggers them. I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and that's why I said, you know, because if he was a real, uh, a real parent, I mean, he may have done his dirt. You got a lot of parents that do dirt, mm -hmm. but their kids never see it. They never bring it home. They, they never bring it home. You know, so it's unfortunate that these kids who, whatever ones, are going to have to be processed, have due process in the law because of their actions. You know, because they're not going to look at it like, oh, well, you know, your father put you in this situation. Well, you three times seven and some now, and you grown. And at some point, you have to be responsible. But it's, like I said, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, Diddy, put these kids in this situation. Mm -hmm. That's not a good parent. I mean, like he just said, the boy is out there drinking and living a life of rally, you know, after all this, that, no, you call that right. That, that's not right. That's not a good parent raising your kids like that. You know, so I do have empathy for him, but unfortunately, if he did the things they say he did, his father just put him in a bad, a bad, you know, bad situ uh, situation. Yeah, okay. it's very sad. Okay, let me add this to the um, story here. Hold on one second. I play this last video before we move from the whole Diddy thing. Um, Chris Hansen. So now we have two people come out saying that Diddy was talking to the feds. Do you think that's true? Whether it's true or not, and he might have been cooperative in some way, shape, or form, you don't get away with human trafficking unless you give up John Gotti or something like that. And that's not what happened here. I can tell you, Jesse, this, that this investigation has been going on for a long time, very closely held by HSI, so much so that even some of the agents on the raid a week ago today didn't know whose house they were raiding until they got there. That's how closely held this was. Wow, because there could have been a tip. Absolutely. And there are allegations that he was paying law enforcement through his chief of security, which also happened to be Michael Jackson's chief of security. I don't buy into that. You know, 
people. So hold on, we're going to continue listening to this man, but a lot of stuff, some of the stuff he's saying, he's full of crap. You don't know if you're going to buy into that he was paying people off. Sir, stop the nonsense. You know what everybody's doing in this situation is they're covering who they want to cover, right? Um, they're saying, he, he, listen, this thing goes on all the time. Off-duty um, police are they go and they sometimes they they serve as bouncers as clubs some of them end up seeing too much and falling into crime themselves and then they be the ones getting locked up um did he have pull and his pool was not invisible this pool was real so of course he's going to sit up here and say i don't believe that you know uh that there's he could have paid cops off sir stop he also was saying that there were some, he, he, I, he, he listened to his word. He said there are some agents that were there and didn't know what they were doing. Well, into that, into the moment where they got to the house. Um, I feel like he's full of baloney with that also, but we'll talk more after we hear more from him. Uh, hold on one second. This is a man that was bouncing $13,000 in checks. involved in law enforcement close to them. But that doesn't mean they're taking payoffs. That doesn't mean they're doing big favors. They like that closest. It's just like how Diddy was able to court Diageo or Estee Lauder. He was very successful in doing that, and that made him a lot of money and gave him credibility outside the hip-hop rap world. And that's what he was trying to do here, a lot like what Epstein did with very powerful political and business. Field. And if you look at this report in the New York Post, you see it's a constellation oh, of billionaires he's involved Very with. similar to what Epstein was doing. And, you know, these guys get drunk with power, allegedly. You know, Diddy has said that these allegations are false, but they get drunk with power and all of a sudden they lose their, their balance and what's right and what's wrong. And they're insulated and they've got everybody telling them they're great. And all of a sudden these civil suits come out and the feds watch this that's what happened with r kelly it started with civil suits then hsi got involved and and they're the lead agency for yeah it's these civil suits are just like a silver platter for the feds very helpful to very helpful take these guys down all right well we'll see how this plays out chris hansen take down with chris hansen thank you so much thank you jesse click here to subscribe to the Ooh, listen it's a lot of moving parts it's crazy. It is what it is. We'll stay connect, connected to this um, Diddy story. Uh, many people are saying, oh, he's going to get taken on this day, that day. Um, we don't know the day. Um, we know that they're trying to have an airtight situation before they do go and get him. But the problem they're having right now is that they may know what, that he did what he did, but they can't directly put his hand on said situation because even little Rodney said himself, he made me go to the club and secure uh, uh, the workers. So if you went to the club to get the workers. Did you go to the club with the money to pay for them too? Or they just came for you? And, and listen, it's a mess. But most of the things are not, they, they maybe lead back to Diddy, but they don't connect to Diddy and the sense of, you know, he the one that actually paid people or did such, 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 such. So anyway, we're going to move forward and go into this last story um, where the lady just lost her mind on Spirit Airlines. So Spirit Airlines fight woman has absurd meltdown while being removed. A woman had a cartoonish meltdown on Spirit Airlines, and while cops were trying to remove her, she tried invoking the name of George Floyd. The video is making its rounds online, which captures an incident on a Spirit plane from March 23, which seems to have been in the process of taking off from Vegas. Unclear what happened that led to the ruckus, but um, because here it is. Hold on one second, guys. I'll show this first and then I'll continue.
This is George. Listen, dark times. People what? need help. People need help. Okay. What? So this video is making arounds online, which captures an interest incident on the spirit plane for March 23, which seems to have been in the process of taking from off from Vegas. Unclear what happened that led to the ruckus, but right from the get go in the clip, cops are on hand. Okay. She's wilding out. People was, you can see the police put one handcuff on her as the woman protests. And when they tell her she's under arrest, she said, that's fine. Um, notice she's been there before. That's when the woman claims cops are hurting her and starts to wail like a siren. You can hear a lot of people on the plane chuckle at the wheels in her seat. And it even looks like the cops themselves are getting a slight kick out of her performance. At one point, her freak out starts to compare herself to what happened to Floyd. Other videos from this moment show <laughs> that are patient with her as she continues to rant and rave, speaking what sounds like a whole lot of nonsense. Eventually, when the officers try to get a, get a, a bit more aggressive in getting her off the plane, she slaps one of their hands away. The man who posts this says everyone on board had the deep plane for the cops to deal with this woman. She was wilding out. When reached out to the Vegas PD to see what the woman, um, what this woman was arrested for, and to the spirit as well. So far, no word back. Okay, she wilded out. She lost her mind. She looked absolutely crazy. Just dark, crazy times. In my opinion, your thoughts? Steve, play that again. While in my opinion, talking. Okay, go ahead. And <laughs> um, first of all, glad spirit don't come here to Alabama. That's what I'm gonna say firstly. Secondly, I, I I hate that people are making a spectacle out of what happened to George Floyd because that was an injustice. Um, I just don't understand how we gonna mix the two. Um, uh, while it's hilarious on one end, it's so disrespectful and so unheard of on the other end. Um, I really wouldn't want this to be associated with George Floyd in no sense of the word because he did suffer and is not here for it. So, yeah, she was a she's a mess. Something, something was wrong with her. Um, Doctor Love. Um, yeah, this is funny. When I first seen her stand up, I'm like, okay, she's drunk. Either she's drunk or high. And you say they were just getting on a plane from Vegas? I think they was leaving Vegas. I don't know where they was going to. But either oh, way, yeah. she got everybody delayed. Okay, yeah, they was leaving Vegas. She she, she was still, um, well, she probably was drinking in a, um, what do you call it, the airport. She probably was drinking in an airport, still vacationing. Um, yeah, I'm just going to blame it on some alcohol and some substance. I, I'm just going to say that because it, it was just too funny. Just too, I don't think there's nobody that's serious. So, yeah. <laughs> Even though I don't like spirit. Let's just put that out there or frontier. Okay. <laughs> there you go, boom. Katrina, y'all? <laughs> one thing. I ain't riding no airplane called spirit because I don't want to be one. <laughs> I don't want to be one. And I look like, like a troll doll. <laughs> she did. She looked crazy. God, said, but I will. Uh, uh, she could be sis at me. <laughs> I had to move. And spirit, nickel, and dab you out of everything. That's why it's so cheap. That's why uh, uh, I ain't riding. Then call no spirit because I ain't finna be no spirit. But that lady, that that's just too funny. I think. I mean, that should be the feel good story. Well, other than what he said, <laughs> that should be the feel good story of the day. Cause that lady just made my day. I kid you not. That was too funny. But she acting like that, and somebody could have been seriously—I mean, seriously, seriously hurt—because of what she's doing, and it's ridiculous. And she up, she has to be on ecstasy, alcohol, cocaine, or something. She's on something, cause ain't no—I no, mean, I'm sorry, sorry about the word. I'm sorry about the word. No, you're fine. You're fine. But she on something. What she on? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> when she gets to that jail, she gonna slap back into reality. But that was just too funny. She but she uh, before. She said she'd been there before. <laughs> you, I can, I can imagine. She okay. looked like it. Uh, but, uh, probably the, the psych ward part. 
Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's all I got to say. It was that was funny, but no, she don't need to be. She don't need to fly. She need. To, I don't know about driving either, because that she might be heck on wheels in a car. I don't know what they do. With her. Put her in a little shopping cart and push her down the road. I don't know, but <laughs> that that was too funny. I'm done. I'm done. I can't say nothing else. I'm done. Thank you. Tay Tay, you're up. <laughs> Sorry, Diva. The way she made that door, it's like, ooh, ooh, something like that. That just got me tickled right there. Oh, serious dope to the side. Well, somebody probably get her some, uh, a drink in the, um, in the plane. Because you know how airplanes do, they serve that stuff right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking at first. I agree with Dr. Lowe right there, too. Somebody get, get her a drink, or or she's, I don't know. This is, this doesn't make no sense right here. If that were me, Diva, you better believe I'll drive myself to wherever the plane go over there. Because I ain't got time for this foolery right here. That That's was. all. <laughs> Thank you, Tay Tay. Um, e, you're up. We can clean our white clothes without using bleach. Even work some Um, so the woman claiming the cops were hurting her and she couldn't <laughs> breathe, that sounded just like Misa Hilton with the excessive force nonsense. This video just put hold on i keep hearing is the video playing in the background i'm here i'm hearing no somebody is not muted katrina okay go ahead oh i'm sorry yeah um because i lost my train of thought oh i know what i was going to say this video proves to me that a lot of people are not ready for real life because yes. all this going back and forth to jail and just advertising that, like it, and letting it roll off the tongue so freely, jail is not for fun. And in fact, it minimizes the significance of going to jail. And because we as a culture have protested and advocated for our people to be able to serve their time and come back to society and not be treated any differently, this is part of the problem. And this is why so many unstable folks are in the workplace right now, or on the highway right now, or on the airplanes right now, because you never know what you're going to get, especially in the work. It's dangerous. And I've never flown Spirit. I always fly Delta. And let me tell you, if you're ever on the plane with me, I will report you for any mention, <laughs> suggestion, or inference of a protest. You will not protest and risk my life up in the air in the name of your silly little drunken emotions. I did not find this funny because when me and my baby fly, this spectacle is a parent's worst nightmare, having to explain what this person is doing, especially when there are so many emotions and anxiety about getting on the plane to begin with. Luckily, the plane had not taken off yet, but this is a nuisance and almost a hundred folks were delayed from arriving to their destination on time. And I should, I would hate to think about people who had to make connections. This, this BITCA should be banned from flying, period. Woo. Well, there you have that. And then there's that. Thank you, E. Uh, Julius, you're up. <laughs> Okay, okay. I had to get it out once again because, oh, my Lord, I've been in the giggles since you showed that video. And I do have a fear of heights. I do not like flying on the planes and all of that. But it's just like her, her mannerisms and the way she was acting. I was... It tickled my spirit, and I'm over here still cracking up, trying to just give my commentary. Whew. It it just it just really tickled my spirit. Like she she like they like you gonna go to jail if you don't cut it out. She like I've been there before. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> girl, girlfriend, like girl, like. What well, what you doing? You you just making yourself a laughing stock and you tickling my spirit with your craziness. That's it. That's I can't keep it the giggles. I'm sorry. 
All right. Right. Uh, it's just yes. tickling my spirit. Somebody said, am I a Karen? Well, listen, I'm not a hip hop star. I'm like Cassie. I'm telling. I'm telling it all. <laughs> Thank you, E. Oh, Wayne, you're up. Um, uh, I ain't really find it funny, you know, especially having to work at the airport because all I can see is now that gay day Come on, has, Wayne. Choo -choo. has to the plane, you know, everybody, people probably miss connections. Mm -hmm. Now you got all those people on there, you know, at one or two gate agents trying to resolve this. How are you going to get me to where I'm supposed to be? You know, so forth and so on. It's just, you know, don't, it's, it's, it's not good for anybody. You know, uh, I mean, either she had a, you know, mental breakdown or maybe on some kind of substance. I don't think she was drunk because usually drunk people slur and she spoke, you know, spoke what well, you can understand she was saying, you know, but, you know, and I'm quite sure it wasn't that funny to the people that was on that plane when they said, you know, everybody has to deplane. You got that right. Yeah. That costs a lot of, a lot of money. A lot goes in that when those planes have to be late. So it, it wasn't funny to me. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I think she she had to be having some type of um, mental breakdown. Um, something is wasn't right with her, or um, either something wasn't right with her, or something was slipped in her. Something wasn't right. Um, and and it's sad, but there are many people that are suffering mental crisis or or, or stuff mentally. Um, and to me, I saw a person that something wasn't right. And I mean, the fact that she mentioned D George Floyd, I mean, of course, that's never right. Um, but again, I think that was part of whatever was going on in her head, something being wrong with her. Um, but the way she was doing it was very animated. It did seem like it was something out of a cartoon or something like that. I'm going to roll right into our... Um, Feel good story, which is actually hey, Kendra, before you go into the feel good story. Sometimes mm -hmm. these people do this for attention. That's and that's exactly well, she, wanted, she wanted to get arrested yeah, on an airplane with federal charges for attention. Then I still will roll with something's mentally wrong with her, exactly. Yeah, because I mean, to, to want to get arrested just for attention. Um, and, and like she said, you could tell, like I said, something got to be wrong with her. Cause she like, I believe that when she said, oh, I've been there before. Go ahead. This she like, ouch, hurt my wrist, arresting me. Um, it, it was, it was this messy, but I'm a roll into the feel good story. And I think it's a good one because it's the artist who created the, um, photos, the portraits of the Obamas, um, but she talked about how she, before she even got to that point, how she struggled. Um, she had to take out a lot of loans. She um, ended up having a heart problem. And it's just a reminder to everybody, never give up on your dreams. So I want to go ahead and um, show this story. I hope I didn't click out of it. Okay, I think I got it. Roy is doing well. See somebody asks about him out there. Play in Washington, the official portraits of Barack and Michelle Obama. The story of the artist who painted the former first lady is the story Alex Wagner has to tell. Miss Amy Sherald, portrait artist. Last week, Amy Sherald went from being a virtual unknown to one of the most talked about artists in the world. On Monday, her painting of Michelle Obama was unveiled at the National Portrait Gallery, alongside Kehinde Wiley's portrait of President Barack Obama. Both Cheryl and Wiley were interviewed and chosen for the job by the Obamas themselves. She came in and she looked at Barack and she said, well, Mr. President, I'm really excited to be here and I know I'm being considered for both portraits, she said, but Mrs. Obama, she physically turned to me. <laughs> And she said, I'm really hoping that you and I can work together. <laughs> you maybe had an, a particular interest in painting her. Yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, he was asking questions as well. And she was like, Shh, no, 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 no. Unlike Kehinde Wiley, President Obama's portraitist, Amy Sherald, age 44, had been largely unknown. This was her big break. 
you've taken out loans, mm -hmm. you have waited tables. Mm -hmm. Tell us how game changing this moment is. I am relieved <laughs> that um, I can pay back my school loans. You know, it's something that, I mean, becoming an artist is not empirical. So it's not about hard work. I mean, you have to put the work in, but that doesn't mean you're going to make it. I think hustling for that long, it kind of, it kind of like chips away at your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And then the breakthrough comes and you're like, oh yeah, that's who I am. Like, this is who I am. Yeah. The portrait is similar to Cheryl's other works, except her models, exclusively black and never smiling, are usually strangers she meets on the street, not former first ladies. As the process went on with the first lady, did you get more comfortable? I did, yeah. Um, we had two sittings, but you're still always a little bit nervous having to look her in her eyes because I have to study the face before I photograph to try to figure out what I want. Mm -hmm. And those little intense moments where you just have to have courage to keep looking because you get bashful because you know, you're know you looking at the first lady. Why do you paint black skin as in, in grayscale? Um, it just looked good. Like the gray skin on these bright colors, it just looked good. I think also I was subconsciously struggling with not wanting to be marginalized. And I say that because I feel like the black body is a political statement in itself, right? So on canvas, all of a sudden, I'm making this political statement just because I'm painting brown skin. But I, I paint the way that I paint. You know, I'm, she chose me. She, she knew what to expect. There are some people who look at the portrait of the first lady and they say, I don't, I don't see her in it. I don't, I, don't, I don't see the Michelle Obama that I know. Yeah. Everybody is invested in them in all kinds of ways, on all different levels. And so for me to even want to paint her makes me crazy because, and, and I'm setting myself up for, for criticism, mm -hmm. right? I feel like I captured her. When I look at it, I see her. I see the Michelle that was present at the sitting, you know, a contemplative, graceful woman, you know, who, who understands her place in history. Today, Amy Sherald has a place in history. Her paintings, which she works on in this Baltimore studio, are now selling for up to $50,000 each. But while this is her moment, it's a moment she wasn't sure she lived to see. When did you first find out about your heart? When I was um, 30. I mean, I've been walking around with my heart function at 18%, which is what most people get transplanted at, but I was asymptomatic, no symptoms at all. Her heart was failing. Plus, there were relatives back home who needed her help. So she put aside her brushes and returned to Georgia. At one point, Cheryl stopped painting for four years. In 2012, her brother died of cancer. Just days later, Cheryl received a heart transplant from a young donor nearly a decade after her diagnosis. My brother dying changed me. I didn't realize how strong I was until I lost my brother. And then I realized what my strength, you know, I'm, I can get through stuff. Um, and losing him only made me want to live my life even harder. For an artist all too familiar with mortality, Amy Sherrill seems to have found a sense of permanence. After all, her work now hangs in the National Portrait Gallery. And I think it matters that these portraits are so different because something happened in history that wasn't supposed to happen. You know, there's a continuum and then there's a stop. And all of a sudden you're like, what was this? So 300 years from now, when the story's been watered down, you know what I mean? It's like those portraits will speak to that moment with the intensity that is necessary to bring forth the truth of what happened and why they were here. <sighs> We are honored to have former first. Well, y'all, there it is. Happy Wednesday. I want to thank y'all for coming through and spending your Wednesday with me. Listen, guys, if y'all did not hit that like button coming in, hit the like button going out. Have an amazing Wednesday. And listen, follow your dreams. I don't care how young, how old you are, whatever you want to do. It's never too late to do it. You're still here. You're still breathing. Follow your dreams. Thanks for being here, guys. I'll see you next time. Good night. Goodbye, everybody. Do not cheat the diva.